previously on Fizz things about plants versus zombies. Way too much. Origin needed an update. Again. So I updated Origin. And then I opened Garden Warfare 2. Boiling point, the crystal structure, the melting point, the density, everything. The cranium is radium. Okay, picking up where we left off because I had to make shift this into two videos because my computer was freaking out. I don't know what's wrong with it, but I'll get it checked eventually <laughs> when I get money. I have two dollars. Picking up where we left off before I get sidetracked. Dave created the Mega Sunflower with the intention of firing an atomic beam to defend the Driftwood Shores from the zombies but he may have inadvertently endangered everyone living in the area. The thing was made to shoot nuclear beams at the zombies, which it, to my knowledge, is never really done. But you don't want that thing just loitering around on your coast town. You may be thinking about something similar, like a nuclear power plant near a uh, town, which doesn't always end well. But when it does, there's a ton of shielding around the radioactive isotopes. There's a bunch of regulated doors, you know, like like in Godzilla also, the, the big door is like... And it's like, dude, they had to do that. It's, you need to close it. But here we have an open doored lighthouse. Hey, but at least they put up some signs up that say that it's nuclear and they have a little light in the middle and it's like boop, boop, boop. But that, that, that's something, I guess. I gotta give them that. Okay, if you remember earlier, I said that we do breathe radium on the rig. Just all the time. So normally it wouldn't really be a problem, but but though that was just a little bit. Just a trace amounts, nothing. It's just tiny. It's a little insignificant amount. Imagine there's a gigantic skyscraper tall glowing in the dark sunflower that shoots a literal atomic beam that can destroy zombies instantly. That's not safe. Early in the video, I said this gets kind of dark and this is about the point where it starts. <laughs> We're dealing with radioactive stuff. So if you want your kids to hear about the radioactive stuff then okay, cool. If you don't, this is your, this is your chance. I'll, maybe I'll put something up, probably. Yeah, I'm, I'm working enough on this video. You know, this video is taking forever. Uh, <laughs> you may not believe it if I told you. Maybe you will if you played Fallout or something like that, but People weren't always too knowledgeable about the effects of radioactive elements. And radium was pretty popular back in the day, specifically around the 20s. It was made for rejuvenating makeup for women, dyes, soap, ointment, and even drinking water. This stuff was everywhere. It was like the miracle thing. You know, whenever you hear like the snake oil salesman where they're like, Hey, get the snake oil. It'll, it'll cure your baldness and it'll whatever it'll, it'll make your hair grow back and you'll you'll be able to lift 10 times the size of your head i don't know what i'm talking about i'm sleepy any water I'm out of water great also there's the previously mentioned watch painters by the way everything i'm saying right now from this point on you can actually find on the actual government cdc website i'll provide a link in the description I'm pointing down, but you know, YouTube likes to change things, so it could be anywhere. I don't know, wherever the hell the description decides to be at whatever point you see this video, because people are still seeing my first PVZ theory and acting like I just made it. <laughs> and there's two more after that. Two more, I wasn't in frame. Painters would inhale radium constantly, every day, but it actually didn't do much. The real thing that got them was when they would, quote, tip the paintbrush on their lips. 
It's basically like, I'm gonna get a gummy worm. This is my paintbrush. They would grab it and they would do this. And then the paint will get in their mouth. And that is how they would ingest it and it would stay in them. So here's a quote from the actual CDC government website. Quote, some of the radium dial painters ingested amounts of radium sufficient to cause death within a few years of their employment. Martland, 1931. Describe the cases of 18 dial painters who died of cancer at the ages of 20 to 54 years old. Causes of death were listed as anemia, necrosis of the jaw, and osteogenic sarcoma. The typical period of exposure was about two years. So there's a couple of things you should notice. That's actually a pretty wide window. It was over a period of time. So for example, if we put got Dave and we he put the mega sunflower up, it might be a while before anything really happens. I don't want to set the world. I'm gonna stop that before I get copyright. Kitty, why are you eating while I'm recording? You disgusting animal. Oh, take your time. Take your time, kitty. Take your freaking time. There's her chicken. Look at her chicken there. Because it took two years for the dial painters to show any symptoms, surely having the sunflower on a separate island not attached to the mainland would help, right? Then let's take a look at what Ken Busseller, Busseller, B-U-E-S-S-E-L-E-R. Then let's take a look at what Ken Busweller, Bus, Busweller of Woods Hole Oceanographic, or she, damn, words are long. Oceanographic Institution, the creator of citizen science slash crowdfunding initiative called Our Radioactive Ocean. One try. He specialized in taking note of the effects of the Fukushima incident, which cataclysmic events caused a reactor to release large amounts of iodine-131 and celsium-137 into the ocean. Quote, During the release, the levels of radioactive material were 50 million times higher than before the incident and were a direct threat to marine life. Granted, none of these are radium, but they are a good real-world example of what would happen in a similar situation. Celsium-137 has a relatively long half-life of about 30 years before it starts decaying. So because of the large area of the ocean and the fact that it decays, over time, the dangers of it have diminished greatly. Time heals all wounds. But the Mega Sunflower isn't one incident. The Mega Sunflower is a large organic that is rooted in the ground and spreading radium all the time. Not only through the air, but radium travels through other channels as well. Water being one of them and the other organics, such as plants. So since the Mega Sunflower is rooted in the area, on a small island, the roots are constantly sending radium out into the harbor. And back to good old Ken. Quote, for the general public, it is not direct exposure, but the uptake by the food web and the consumption of contaminated fish that is the main health concern from the oceans. And a good real world example of such a situation would be the famous case of Eben Byers, millionaire and the chairman of Byers Iron Foundry in Pittsburgh and New York drinking an obscene amount of a particular brand of water called Radathor that contains between one and two micrograms of radium per bottle. The first couple of years, he said that he felt great. Better than great, in fact, that he felt rejuvenated. But after the second year, he started losing weight rapidly. His upper jaw deteriorated to the point where it either decayed or had to be removed, minus for a couple of teeth. And later, early in the next year, he died. So Driftwood Shores is a harbor town. Most of the restaurants, if not all of them, are seafood. And remember how I said Celsium-137 decays in 30 years? Radium-226's half-life is 1,600 years. So let's say that 
You have the Mega Sunflower guarding your town. The ever vigilant protector. Your town would become a ghost town in about two years. So that's all I got for now. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at SadPandarinGame, minus the S at the end, for updates on future videos and when I stream and all that good stuff. Wow, Kitty, can you like chill? I'm trying to do a thing, I'm trying to be professional. And our Patreon is in the description too, if you really want to. It's on a Vi video basis and specifically for videos that I work hard on. So it would be like this one and the last theory I did. Things that take a lot of editing or I write a script for, you know, stuff like that. The ones that take forever to do. So you could be spending as little as like every couple months. Do whatever you want. Um, so yeah, that's there. <laughs> that's there. I don't, I don't really make anything off these things. So. Also, make sure if you like this content to subscribe for whenever a new video. Kitty, I swear. Okay, she didn't move it that much. So make sure to subscribe. So make sure to subscribe if you want to see more. With that, I'll see you in the next video. Whenever that is. two years. That was my cat running across the camera and it scared me. <laughs> it is on. You see this ridiculousness? Do you see it?